Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chimavi. Good morning, colleagues. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the COVID-19 regulations. As we all know that uh, we are still um, under strict regulations of COVID. And uh, we all know that there was uh, some scare that was created by the new variant that was first isolated in South Africa. Doesn't mean that it, come, it comes from South Africa, but it was first isolated in South Africa. That means that our healthcare system is really good and we've got good scientists that kick up such. Now, with our team, uh, we are going to test 72 hours before we gather so that we make sure that everyone that comes into camp is clean. And then when we are in camp, we're going to test again 48 hours before the match against uh, um, Ghana, which is on Thursday. So we'll test on, on Tuesday uh, because it's a CAF regulation. Now that test will actually use it also to travel to Ghana because we are traveling immediately after the game because we do not have time between uh, the match on Thursday and the match on Sunday. And uh, CAF regulations are also saying that we need to test on the on 48 hours before the next game as well. So all the games that are played, we test 48 hours before. So we'll use the test um, for the match against uh, Ghana as a traveling test as well. And then to test in, in Sudan on arrival on Friday, uh, we are in communication with our embassy to do that test on Friday uh, at the hotel. And that test then will also be used uh, to travel back to South Africa because the regulations in our country says that you need to um, uh, have a test that is not older than 72 hours. So in terms of testing, that is what is there. Before um, Sudan had, uh, had banned travelers coming from South Africa, but we have since uh, um, addressed that uh, and we got confirmation from the government and from the Sudanese uh, uh, government and also from the federation to say that we, they all, all that they need from us is just the 72 hour test. So that's, 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 that's um, as far as testing is concerned and COVID regulations. And uh, the overseas based players, they'll have to test again for the fourth time before they go back to their country. So there's quite a lot of testing. And when it comes to the uh, players, um, again, as you would remember last time in previous camp, we had about uh, 11 players that could not make it due to medical reasons. So right now we have about seven that can't make the team because of medical um, related issues. But uh, I'd like to firstly report on uh, Lebu Pira and Lebu Motiba who have had uh, injuries and operations. Uh, both of them knee injuries and they've since recovered and they've, they've now graduated to joining the team. Even though Lebu Motiba had a flare up a week or so ago, but I've been in discussion with the doctor, they made another assessment in another scan, which then showed that uh, there's, it's not really something serious, it was just fluid accumulation because of how they were graduating him back to uh, full um, uh, training and playing again. The other player that uh, um, uh, was also earmarked for the team is Tembinkosi Lodge, who suffered a groin injury. And uh, we are in communication with the medical team from Orlando Pirates. Unfortunately, um, he didn't make it before the team was put together. So he is also out because of the injury. The other player is uh, um, Gosinati Sibisi, who suffered a concussion, a player from Arrows, who suffered a concussion a week or so ago, as you all know, as you all know that with concussion, you need a graduated return to play after you've suffered a concussion. You can't just get concussed today and then the next day, then you go in because the scan said that you are you don't have any um, uh, physical injury. With concussion, concussion is a mechanical injury. Um, you do scans, but scans will say that there's nothing wrong. But you need to understand that with concussion, the, 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 the investigation thereof is different. The next player is uh, Debo Homukwena. Debo Homukwena had a knee injury. Fortunately, 
he's now back with the team. He has played last week, but we are monitoring him closely. Unfortunately, also, he didn't make it because uh, for this game, we, want, we, we are looking for players that can give us um, 180 minutes because uh, these are very, very important games. Uh, Abu Bakr Mubarak also suffered a hamstring. As you follow uh, professional uh, football in South Africa, uh, Abu Bakr hasn't played really 90 minutes. He's slowly being brought back to the team. Uh, they are slowly graduating him so that they don't cause, a, they don't uh, make the injury to be worse, or rather they don't cause a, a flare-up. And then the last player is not an injury per se, is Kamuhela Mukocho. Kamuhela Mukocho, his physical condition is not um, at its best right now because you all remember that his league was suspended for quite some time. They've only opened now. He has just joined the team last week. So with that, then it, it makes him uh, not physically ready to join the team. So those are the players and that's an update from me. Thank you very much. Because our objective uh, hasn't changed. Our objective is to qualify for, for AFCON and also uh, to do well in the AFCON. So um, since our last match against Autome, of which we had uh, serious challenges, you remember when we selected the team, we had to make eight changes uh, going into the match, and some changes were made in camp uh, due to medical reasons, and some of the players um, uh, got injured, and we had to make eight changes uh, going into that match. So here we are today, we are to announce uh, the 26 men's team that will play back-to-back -back against uh, uh, Ghana at home and Sudan away. So um, we have done our profiling since our last uh, game against uh, Sao Tome. So in the profiling, we have discovered that uh, we have got serious challenges when it comes to goalkeeping department. Um, in the last uh, three weeks, uh, we had um, uh, Ronan Williams, um, a, a current and a former Bafana Bafana goalkeeper, being the only one playing regularly for his club. And we also discovered um, uh, Veli Mota from uh, uh, Amazulu, uh, who we have been uh, tracking from uh, Chipa United. And there is also a player called uh, Oscar Rin. No, 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 I'm not announcing the team. I'm giving a background, I'm giving a profile of the players. Um, Oscar Rin Masuleki from uh, Baroka has been doing very well in big matches uh, against Sundowns, against Pirates, and against Chiefs. So the goalkeeping department has been a very serious concern for us. Uh, lately, we saw Itumelen Kune starting to play for Keza Chiefs. And um, uh, all of the, the goalkeepers, we have been doing a proper and a thorough assessment of them. Then in defence, uh, we are fully aware that um, uh, we lost uh, uh, Mochaga Madisha. May his soul rest in peace. So uh, after we have um, uh, prepared him over time as one of the younger defenders, unfortunately, we, we had to, to do without him. Um, because of the tragedy that um, we as a country we were faced with. Then I think Doc has given a report on Nkosina TCBC from, from Maros, who has been doing very well, a very intelligent defender, um, and has been doing well for, for Aros for a very long time. Then um, um, we also profiled uh, Tarek Phyllis from uh, uh, Cape Town City, um, over time, he was with us in the Kosafa in 2018. Uh, Tsepa um was injured in the last camp. He came back, he got an, a red card, and uh, he has not been playing regularly. Abu Bakr Mubara, I think uh, Doc has made uh, uh, us aware of his situation. And then we also have Laila Kay, who had his first cap against uh, Sao Tome in our second match, uh, because... Uh, in camp, uh, Innocent Maela got injured and had to, to be arrested. Then in the middle field, um, in the past, we had Sinatemba Sitebe, um, who just came back uh, to play for the team last week. Um, he has not been played uh, regularly for the team. Um, Tabo Nodada, the, the vice captain at Cape Town City, has also been doing very well. 
I'm just giving you um, uh, some players uh, that um, we we have done a lot of work in in in, in assessing and profiling them. Leboma Boye for Sundowns played as a right back, and uh, recently uh, he was played as a number eight, and he even scored in the last match in Tanzania. Um, so uh, he has been doing very well. Uh, Tibo Mukwena, yes, we saw him playing for the first time, uh, coming in against Pirates and also starting uh, against Amazulu. Uh, Taba Monare uh, has been doing very well for Pirates. I went to watch him play against uh, Joining Galaxy at Orlando Stadium. Uh, he did very well in that match. And another player from the under-23 team is Pepe Lositole playing in Portugal. He has been a regular feature for his team. So we are also uh, profiling him um, for Bafana Bafana, even though he's currently in the under-23 team. Tabiso Gutumela from Marisberg has been... Um, it has been very difficult for his club to win matches, but mm -hmm. in the last week he scored against Pirates and then they won against uh, um, uh, Black Leopards. So the confidence with him, I think uh, it will improve for the better. So these are the players that are not in the, in the team that has been selected. Uh, I just wanted to give uh, a background of um, uh, those players that are not in the team. But now we are to start with the 26 that have been selected uh, to play against uh, Sudan and uh, Sao Tome. Uh, thank you. Uh, goalkeepers. We have Veli Mota coming into the team for the first time. Uh, we want to congratulate him. He has been doing very well. And he moved from Chipa to, to Amazulu. And uh, we are very, very happy with uh, his performance uh, coming into Bafana Bafana for the first time. We can only wish him the best of luck. The second goalkeeper will be Ronan Williams. Like I said, he has been the only keeper of, of who has been with Bafana Bafana before playing regularly. Um, Ronan Williams from Supersport uh, will be in the team. Um, the third keeper will be uh, Itumele Kune from uh, Keita Chiefs. Um, like I said, he played uh, in the past two matches. Um, going into these matches, uh, we could not uh, bring all inexperienced goalkeepers because um, uh, the profile that I've given, it was uh, to be Veli Moto and uh, Oscar Rima Suluke. So Itumelen Kune, because of the past experience and the few games that he has played for, for Chiefs, we felt uh, uh, he will be uh, included in the team. Uh, now we go into defenders. Um, uh, defenders, we have Tiban Pete uh, from Portugal playing for Os Belenenses, uh, who is doing very well for the team. Uh, he's in the team. Last time we could not get him because of uh, medical reasons, so he, he will be back in the team. The second defender will be uh, Sianda Kulu, um, who is playing in Israel for Hupel Tel Aviv. Uh, he had a game yesterday. And uh, last week, he also had a very good game playing for his team. So he's back with Bafana Bafana, bringing experience into the team. Uh, the other defender will be uh, Tulan Slachoyo, the, the, the captain of the team uh, from Orlando Pirates, uh, who is playing for Pirates and uh, the vice captain at Pirates. Uh, the other defender, uh, Mosali Busa, who has been playing regularly for, for Sundowns, who is giving us um, much of balance on the left, being a left footer. He has been playing and he played again in the Champions League in Tanzania. So um, the profiling uh, ended up putting him in the team. Uh, the other defender will be Innocent Maela. Innocent Maela played uh, very well against uh, Sao Tome in our first leg in Durban. Unfortunately, he got injured. He could not play in the second match. Uh, Innocent Maela has not been playing regularly for Pirates, but uh, we, we, I went to watch him against uh, joining Galaxy. He played uh, as left centre back with uh, Tulane Slachoayo, and he had a, a good game because of his experience with Bafana Bafana, and because he's always in the team with Orlando Pirates. We thought to give us balance on the left. Um, Innocent Maela um, has been selected to be in the team. 
The other one is um, Swiss Atlanti, uh, a returned soldier for Afana Afana. Um, I spoke to, uh, to him uh, in the past in terms of him not getting a uh, game time, but um, it was just uh, because of competition at the club and the club was doing well and the coach could not just uh, uh, change the team just to accommodate Lanti. So in the past two matches, he played um, for Morocco Solos, I mean for Solos FC, and uh, he brings a lot of experience into, into the Bafana Bafana team. And also with his physical profile, playing against uh, the giants of Ghana in terms of the physical stature and Sudan. Tapelo Morena, um, uh, he's also in the team. He had um, a good game against uh, Sao Tome, coming uh, back from a very lengthy injury. And also in the past few matches, um, he has been playing and uh, he was rested for some time. And recently, um, uh, the coaches have started playing him. I had um, a chat with Coach Manoba about uh, all Sundowns players and their physical and mental readiness. And uh, we got a green light uh, about uh, all the players from Sundowns that have been selected. Greg Martin, um, a new face in the Bafana Bafana team. I think Greg has been doing very well for, for, for Cape Town City and he even kept um, the, the captain out of the team. Uh, in this case, um, he has been playing as a right back, as a right wing, as a right wing back with his energy levels. And also when you look at um, the generation of, of players that he comes from, he's born 93, so we felt uh, he's a player for the future uh, to compete on the right with Morena and the rest of the guys. Rivaldo. Godzilla, uh back in the team. Uh, I think Rivaldo, um, he has been a, a very good uh, player for, for, for Bafana Bafana, as young as he was, and then he got injured and he was out of the team for some time. And now he's playing regularly for Sundowns and he's giving you more of uh, multifunctionalism when it comes to your tactics. He can play as a midfielder, he can play as a defender. So um, we need uh, players with experience, with uh, uh, this type of qualities. So Rivaldo comes uh, back into the team. Tembazwani, uh, Tembazwani uh, is, a, is a warrior. We know what Tembazwani can give to Bafana Bafana and what Tembazwani uh, is giving to, to Sundowns uh, with the experience also of playing in the Champions League and also having played for Bafana Bafana. We needed uh, his experience and his talent uh, to come and add value to the team. Tulani Tulani Serrero, um, uh, he has been playing very well for his team Al Jazeera in Abu Dhabi. For since the season started, he has been played regularly. Uh, so I spoke to him and I spoke to his uh, his coach. Uh, he's doing well. He's in good frame of mind. So the experience also that we need in the team to play against Ghana, we selected to learn such way. Ben Motswari, he has been knocking at the door to become to be part of the Fana Fana for some time. Um, it was a very thin line between him and Monari to be selected into the team. Uh, so when we profiled the qualities of uh, uh, Ben Motswari and that of Dean Femen, we felt uh, we need to bring in Motswari. If ever we have got challenges with um, uh, other midfielders, he can always uh, come into the midfield. Uh, even though he's not as experienced, but he's playing for Pirates, he's played in the Champions League. So it is uh, uh, befitting for us uh, uh, to bring in somebody who has been doing well for Pirates, like Ben Motswari. Bongani Zungu uh, from uh, uh, Rangers. Um, Bongani Zungu has been played uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, the, 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 the highest number of minutes that was, has played for Rangers was 75 minutes and um, even in the last uh, uh, Europa League he played uh, uh, 10 minutes uh, with the experience and how he played for, for, for the team against our Tome both matches. Uh, we felt uh, let's bring the experience and the confidence that uh, Bongani Zungu has got as of now into the team. Kigandoli, um, the past uh, three matches he has been on the bench. He, uh, 
but I spoke to him and uh, I realized that uh, it's all about competition in the team. So him coming to Bafana Bafana, um, uh, getting a chance to play, uh, he will always uh, uh, give the best and the coaches uh, back at his club at Montpelier will always uh, take uh, cognizance of that. Percy Dow, uh, he moved from Anderlecht to Brighton in England and uh, on arrival uh, he was played in the, in the three matches and he did very well in those matches and when I spoke to him um, he was actually saying uh, since uh, he arrived at Brighton the competition has been very stiff and the guys have been doing very well so he's just waiting for his chance uh, uh, to play but he's looking forward to come and uh, represent his country. Sipon Bule uh, from Supersport. Um, I think um, since the season started, Sipo has been a regular feature in the Supersport uh, Super United team and he has been doing very well. And I spoke to Coach Caetano after I watched him against the uh, Kesa Chiefs at uh, uh, FNB Stadium. And uh, we spoke about areas of the game that Sipo needs to improve uh, for, for, for him to be a quality player uh, at, at international level. So, um, Sipo, as part of the under-23 players, he's in the team and we're looking forward uh, uh, to, to have him in the team and add value to the team. Andile Jali, uh, you remember Andile was selected in the past uh, camp <coughs> and he got injured in the last 15 minutes of the game that he played and uh, ever since he came back from Sundowns, uh, he, has doing, he has been working very hard. Like I said, I spoke to the coaches about him. And Andile, with the experience uh, of playing against uh, uh, this um, uh, experienced uh, players, uh, quality players playing overseas, you know Andile, with his talent, with his arrogance, he will always uh, uh, represent himself very well uh, in, 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 in this type of matches. Luda Singh uh, from Portugal, Pascal de Ferreira. He has been played regularly for his club and scoring goals. So um, we had um, I asked him to send me uh, his video clips uh, in the past uh, uh, three matches, and uh, I could see that he has been doing very well for his team. So Luda Singh also coming from the under-23 uh, will be an added uh, uh, value uh, to the team in these two matches. Dean Furman uh, from England. Khalil, United. Um, the team has been in quarantine because of the COVID in England, uh, but he has been part of the team. Um, even last week he was on the bench when they played uh, uh, their matches. Uh, he was saying to me they are, uh, they are behind with 10 matches because of uh, COVID uh, uh, in terms of uh, the conditions at their club. So they had to to, to be quarantined and then now they have to play uh, the 10 matches that they are behind with. Kemi Dirasmas, um, I think um, uh, what uh, we have been observing of Kemi Dirasmas playing for, sun, for, for sundowns coming from uh, Cape Town City, he's, um, he's a finisher of note and um, in, in games like this we need somebody who can just uh, put the ball behind the net, score goals for you, so that uh, we can achieve our objective of qualifying. So Kemi Dirasmas from Mamlodi Sundowns uh, will be in the team, he's in the team. Bradley Krobla, our top goal scorer in the league, uh, he's in the team. Um, he did very well to, to get um, the, the number of goals that he has scored. Uh, so we are looking forward uh, to turn uh, the luck and the goal scoring uh, Prowess into Bafana Bafana and start scoring for us. Rizek Hamaldin, second best goal scorer in the league. Uh, I think he has done very well for Solos FC. Uh, very balanced uh, with uh, good quality, technical ability. So Rizek uh, will also be coming into the team. Uh, the last time he was in the team, it was when he was with uh, coach uh, uh, Gordon. Uh, now I think he has done very well for Solos. You see, Solos has been doing very well in the league. Uh, their, their last uh, uh, match, uh, it was the first match they lost. So Ruzeich uh, will come with that confidence. Lyle Foster from Victoria Jemirez. 
from Portugal. He played uh, last week and he did well in that match. Um, so we felt uh, being the youngest of, of, of the strikers we have in the country, uh, let's give him a chance to be part of this team. Um, in, the, in, the, in the near future, you will be ready to take over from uh, Bradley uh, Hrobla because he's a 2000 uh, born player. Thank you. That is the team um, for Ghana and Sudan. Um, we have made a provision for that because we know that uh, COVID-19 is uh, can happen. And uh, we know that you can test negative today and go into the squad and then when you're in the squad you test positive because of the incubation period. So um, for that, players are not sharing. It's one of the ways that we have put in place to try and minimize the risk of cross-infection. So players are not sharing uh, the rooms, they are, they are, they are stay sleeping alone. Um, if the player tests positive, fortunately that player will have to stay behind. However, we are going to do rapid antigen tests on the rest of the team just to make it to find an indication as to whether there's another positive in the team. If there's another positive, then we'll do an agent PCR because now we've got we've got uh, ways and uh, with Lancet we've got a relationship where we get results very very fast. So we'll do that. Unfortunately, um, um, the test that we're going to do, rather fortunately, the test that we're going to do is before the game against Gambia, and we use the same test to travel. So it gives us ample time to actually make ways in terms of replacement should there be a need for replacement. Thank you very much. Sorry, Tom. Uh, just in the sense, if a player starts getting the symptoms of COVID-19, and that's why I'm saying on that Friday, and then you go, because he's showing those symptoms, and you test them, so you're saying that player would then specifically stay, or is it the same procedure we just described of testing everyone? Yeah, in terms of rapid tests, it's tests that we have on with us. You do it now, the results come now. It's a rapid test. So if there's a player showing symptoms, that player is immediately isolated and, and, and tested. There, there, and there. And if the rapid test shows that that player is positive, because a rapid test, you can get a, a lot of false positive in a rapid test. So we have to do an agent PCR test that will actually, unfortunately, like I said, we won't test on the day that we leave, on Thursday after the match. We'll test on Tuesday. Tuesday testing for the game on Thursday, and immediately on Thursday we leave. That is the test that we're going to use to travel to Sudan. So we won't test on the day. We'll test today, because remember, the regulations are saying test 48 hours before the match. So we'll use the same results. Thank you, Doc. Yeah, I think um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very um, emotional one in terms of the pressure that comes with it. Because when you look at, um, at, at the, the log standing, I think um, as South Africa, we have done very well. Because um, Ghana has got nine points, we have got nine points, and Sudan has got six points. And when we do our permutations, um, any of the top three teams, if they win their matches, they will win the group. Um, if, if any of the top teams, they drop uh, three points, it means the, the group will be open again. Because when you look at um, uh, Ghana, we play Ghana at home. It's a, it's a, it's a game that you're going to play to get results. And getting results against Ghana, it will give us um, confidence um, and uh, going into Sudan. And playing against Sudan also, we are going to play for results. Um, in terms of uh, the, the numbers, uh, out, of, out of six, we draw the two games, we get two points, we qualify. Out of the six, we get uh, four points, we qualify. Out of the six, we get six points, we qualify. So that is why it is so important for us to play uh, the two matches to get results. Um, whatever results we're going to get, it means it will, have, will help us uh, to qualify. The reason why we have uh, requested the CEO to allow us to take more players is because we want to have a situation where if you look at, those, uh, if you look at the team, most of the players can play more than, more than one position. And that is why if we are to play our best 12, our best 13 against Ghana, we can always get our best 13 also against Sudan because freshness and physical readiness 
will be important. And uh, with our uh, medical team, we have done our um, analysis in terms of um, what type of weather we'll be exposed to in, in Sudan. It will be very humid. So in essence, we should have a balanced team. If we have to play a, a, a new team in Sudan because of the, the conditions, we should be able to do that. Before I take the next question from Mark Strato, let me just take a question from Sepang Nairwane, a coach which says, can, can coach speak more about where he prepares the athlete about what he play? Coach. I think uh, we all know that Rivaldo played for Final Fun as a centre back. And if you play three at the back, Rivaldo can be the, the, the central defender with the three at the back. And that is what he's doing now at Sundowns. When they start playing from the back, he becomes a centre back, starting play from the back. And also, Rivaldo is the one who's giving more balance uh, in the middle field for Sundowns. And the playing against uh, highly technical, highly tactical. Uh, players like that of Ghana, we need his intelligence, his anticipation, his experience uh, in, in both positions. As a centre-back, if we need to, as a midfielder, if we need to. That is why we are saying we have selected players who can play more than one position because of uh, the demands uh, going into the two matches. Do you need to answer more questions? No, I think uh, I, need to, I need to answer directly the question of, of us bringing him into the team. Um, because um, I spoke to to Mark some time ago to say we are we are we are waiting for the club to decide what should be happening with the with the situation with Bongani. Um, the unfortunate part of it is that uh, Bongani is um, a national team player, and there is so much attention that will be given to somebody like him if ever um, he misbehaves wherever he's playing. So we understand that one. But uh, we always respect uh, the independency of the club in dealing with situation at club level. And that is what I said. I said, um, I met with the CEO, we spoke about it, and we said, no, no, let's wait for the club to give us uh, um, their verdict in terms of how they are going to address this matter. And then the club uh, had um, a DC with Bongani and the rest of the guys, and the club decided uh, to, to address it the way they have done. And Bongani was put into the team to play um, against um, uh, to play in that Europa League. So when it comes to um, the us and the players and the, and their clubs, um, if ever a player is found to have um, 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 he's found on the wrong side of the law at national team level, the national team will deal with that player at national team level. And when that player goes back to his club. The club is not going to to um, to met out any form of punishment based on what happened in the national team, and we are also doing the same. We respect the the independence of the club, but at the same time, because he's a national team player, we need to to address um, such issues. And what we did was to speak to Bongani after uh, the DC and. Um, he explained to us what happened, and he, he sent me an apology in terms of uh, uh, what happened, and we are looking forward to have Bongani in the team, and hopefully uh, he should have learned from this. And um, I said to him, um, he had um, something like this on his profile picture. People are building walls to block your path. And I said to him, the only person who can build a wall to block your path is Bongani Zungu. And you must start breaking those walls and making use of those pieces to move forward with your career. And uh, we are looking at him coming into the national team after he has broken those um, walls uh, to help the team to qualify and to play for his country. We have uh, issued a statement and we have also went as far as challenging Kev uh, to say it can't be that people just wake up and say we have read because all their argument was based on the media stories. So we had said uh, to them for as long as there is no scientific research, in fact, uh, we were in that meeting with Dr. Ngwenya who presented to them the actual facts. And we said to them, we find it strange that it is used against this country. Whereas if you look at uh, the African uh, uh, numbers of COVID, we are followed by both uh, Morocco and Ghana in terms of numbers. So it did not make sense. So that's why we had uh, refused and said uh, none of our clubs will play in neutral, their home games in the neutral venues. 
But if Morocco decides we don't want South Africa here to play, so the duty in terms of the regulations goes squarely on the team to arrange a venue. And failure to do so, we are said to have, they must just uh, use the rules and regulations and award uh, the teams the points. So we think that it is unfairly used, but we have addressed it at the right platform, and we think it's no longer a problem for us. That's why we have never panicked even when uh, there were questions about this game played at a neutral venue, and we emphasize we are not going to play at any neutral venue. Yeah, when it comes to Itumelon Kuhn, I think uh, he, made, he made a glaring mistakes against uh, Supersport and uh, Black Leopards. And when I spoke to Coach uh, Lee Baxter about the situation, um, he said to me um, uh, they brought Itumelon Kuhn into a meeting to, ex to, to, to find out what actually happened. And as Itumelon Kuhn was explaining the situation, it was just uh, one of those mistakes that you make uh, in your career that um, you, you want to, to forget as quickly as possible because uh, he, he said to them he was trying to play from the back and as a result um, they read into the pass and then uh, he made that mistake. And um, uh, recently I also spoke to, uh, to Idumeleng about his situation. We had a very lengthy uh, telephonic uh, discussion and he was explaining to me what is, go what is going through as a, as a person, as an individual. And what I said to him is that um, you must also consider uh, giving respect to your career, giving respect to the profession that you are in, and um, you are not growing any younger. It is also important for you um, to, to, to be a leader in terms of uh, how you do things um, around. Then when it comes to training and uh, his conduct at the club, um, the coach is very happy with him uh, in terms of uh, being on time for training and also giving his best uh, at training. And um, seeing him playing in the past uh, two, 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 two matches, um, it was based on uh, the attitude that uh, he was showing at training and the club felt uh, they need to give him a chance. And that he has since been doing very well, apart from conceding the four goals against uh, uh, Raja Casablanca over the, the weekend. And um, uh, I think um, uh, any, any human being, any individual, has got those bad patches in life. And I think Itumele uh, Nkune is no different from all of that. We are just uh, uh, looking forward uh, to bring Itumele uh, Nkune who will be focused into the camp and to help the team going forward. But uh, whatever is happening at the club, yes, uh, we have uh, had uh, a conversation of uh, his situation at the club. Can we take uh, the last three questions? Last three questions. Uh, one, two, another question. We'll take the last. Coach, one okay, question. Okay, we'll take the last five questions, Coach, and see you and talk. Thanks, Namsa. To your coach, just a little bit of a follow up to Velilia's question. Playing Ghana, yes, we are both on nine points. How, how important, Coach, is it for us to get a positive result, especially looking at the fact that? Our next game after Ghana, it's uh, um, Sudan, and then for Ghana, it's Sao Tome. How, how crucial is, is it for us to get three points? Thank you. Look, we are playing against Ghana that lost their last match against, uh, against Sudan. And I always say to people, the most dangerous team to play is the team that lost their last match. So in losing their last match against Sudan, um, they will be coming here um, to get to get results, and I think uh, with our analysis uh, that we have done, we are fully aware that Ghana is a possession type of a team, and a possession type of a team, uh, for them to get into your goals, for them to get into your half, they need numbers, and if they do send in numbers, obviously they are creating spaces where it's going to hurt them when we regain possession, and when you look at our at our attacking players, we have added a lot of speed because uh, we are fully aware that. Uh, um, in defense, they tend to stay deep because of uh, uh, them being aware that they might not have the speed to recover or to close or to manage uh, the, the gap between their defensive uh, lines and the goalkeepers. So uh, the idea will be a, an approach that will um, fit into the quality of players we have, an approach that will take advantage of uh, individual players within the team and their approach 
uh, in this match. So we are playing to, to get results. <laughs> Coach, uh, the Ghanaian team have selected basically a 24 locally based players and they've been in camp for the past two weeks. Again, they've taken two players from China, Wakaso, Mubarak, and Ben Echampong, because the Chinese league is in recess. So those two players are in Ghana, and they've been roped into camp. They've got a 26-man team. I see here you also call about 25 or 26. How well is your research? Because when you went for the first game in November of 2019, it was basically because you were not aware about the players chosen. And young Mohamed Kudus is the one who scored the second goal. He is in Ajax now. None of the overseas based players have been selected because of the COVID. If they come and they go, they will be isolated. And because of their lucrative contracts, they have not been selected not even the day you. How well are you with the Ghanaian League in terms of understanding the players you are going to face here at FNB? Yeah, I think uh, you're giving us uh, very classified information about Ghana, and uh, we, we, we really appreciate. Um, when it comes to COVID, I think COVID is affecting all of us, and we are also experiencing the same problem because when I spoke to Dean, uh, he was telling me about uh, the 10-day quarantine at the hotel when you come back from, from South Africa. Because um, South Africa, everybody's looking at South Africa being um, uh, the most toxic uh, COVID-19 uh, country in the world, and we don't really know why. Um, when you look at um, the team that uh, Coach has assembled in Ghana, I have the team, and um, I think uh, they have been in camp now for, for three weeks. So um, it's good for him uh, to have uh, get a camp. Unfortunately, in our country, we can't have, we can't stop the league and then uh, have all the players in camp. But all that we are doing is to keep in touch with the coaches and with the players in the country to give them feedback about their performances in the games that they are playing. Because um, we can't source uh, players from any other country. We can only use the ones that we have in our country, the quality that we have in our country. Um, because we have the best quality in our country and we should also give ourselves that confidence to say we are in Africa and we are one of the best countries in Africa. Um, yes, it is true that um, most of West African countries uh, their players are based in Europe, and we know why, because of proximity in terms of uh, players going overseas and then coming back into their country. So uh, South Africa will have to do with whatever we have, and we'll always try the best, we'll always try to get the best of our players with what we have. If it happens for us not to get uh, players from England because of uh, the COVID regulations and all those challenges, I think uh, before I announce the team, I gave a profile of some of the players who will be considered if anything happens to any of those players who are in the team. Yes, we have done our analysis um, of um, the, the team and the coach, uh, but you will never know. On the day of the match, uh, somebody will be coming in. Wakasu played in the last match against, um, against Sudan, and he has not been in the team for some time. And when you look at the team of Ghana for the past uh, uh, three um, window periods, they have changed the team many a times because of uh, the players they have. The very same uh, player who scored against us is now playing regularly for Ajax and fortunately we can see him on TV, we can profile him on TV, come in to play against South Africa, we'll have to do our, our, our job and uh, get result against uh, whoever is in the team.